to another video. Today I'm going to start the first in my series of the Promise Sustainable and Ethical videos and I'm going to begin with why you should be shopping small business. This is quite dear to my heart because when it comes to the vintage community there is a lot of small businesses or sole traders and I have seen circumstances where people that I know personally or that I have worked with through my Instagram and my YouTube have been taken advantage of by conglomerates and fast fashion companies and so I wanted to share with you why I personally shop small business and also those behind the scenes things that make shopping with conglomerates and fast fashion industries really icky. So the thing that I really wanted to talk about today was the stealing of designs and stealings of ideas. So I want to start by talking about intellectual property rights. This is quite a complicated topic. I'm going to give you a little bit of a definition for those of you who don't know. I hope it's not condescending but it is something that I already kind of knew about, but the more I read about, the more I kind of started to understand it and realized how kind of convoluted it is, especially in the fashion industry. So businessdictionary.com defines intellectual property rights as a right that is had by a person or by a company to have exclusive rights to use its own plans, ideas, or other intangible assets without the worry of competition. The reasoning for intellectual property is to encourage innovation without fear that a competitor will steal the idea and or take credit for it, which is the big problem. For small business. There are so many examples of stories all over the internet where companies like Zara and H&M have stolen small designers and illustrators ideas and put them as motives on their t-shirts or their other items of clothing and basically these small artists and small businesses can't do anything about it which is insane. So suddenly their livelihood, their income is taken away from them by a company that definitely doesn't need any more money. I mean the owner of Zara and his company can afford to make their own design they don't need to steal small businesses designs the reason they're doing it is because it saves them money because big business loves making money and the more they can cut corners the more they can put that money in their pockets which is something that I personally don't want to be contributing to because often small business can't afford to patent things. Patenting means that basically you have a copyright in the item and other people can't steal the idea or steal the concept and sell it for themselves to take the money and the idea away from you. The problem with being a small business or a sole trader is that patenting things cost a lot of money and they can't afford to do that a lot of the time. So they rely on their clientele, their regular customers to do the right thing and buy from them. And when they see, you know, a cheaper version being done by a knockoff company because that company didn't have to invest money in creating the product, that their customers won't kind of dash off and buy from these competitors who are taking advantage of small business and taking the money away from the people who really deserve it. Some of you may have watched my retro stage review video. I have had complaints that that's clickbaity because it's not really review because I didn't buy or own the items, but I wanted people to watch it because they are doing the wrong thing. They have breached intellectual copyright laws by using photographs that they don't have permission to use from the models in the pictures who own the pictures or from the photographers who've done professional shoots for other companies. And then this company, RetroStage, is using the pictures to advertise products that are knockoff versions. So in the picture, you're seeing the real piece from another company, but they are making a horrible, nasty, cheap knockoff version that doesn't even use the same fabrics and has like terrible cuts and stuff. So you are definitely not paying for what you think you're paying for. So they're taking advantage of the customer and they're breaching copyright laws. But what's even worse is that these dresses are stolen from these other companies. If you guys want to watch that video, I will pop it up above over here. So beyond retro stage, another example within the vintage community is the amazing pin curling tool from vintagehairstyling.com. Now this is a tool that I have seen all over Instagram, I've seen it on people's blogs and recently I know Jasmine Chiswell did a little video about her hair secret being this tool. The thing about this product is that Lauren, who is the creator of this product and who runs vintagehairstyling.com, she invested her own savings and her own time and her own energy into this because she saw within the vintage community that people were struggling to do pin curling the old fashioned way like you just kind of have to tuck it in yourself and roll it in. She created something to meet a demand within our community and it cost her a lot of money. She's one person doing this and then this Chinese company has swooped in reverse engineered the design so she had to create the product and then create a mold and that's why it costs what it does because you're having to pay for the whole process of her making the product 
this Chinese company basically just bought the product, reverse engineered it. So they just used the product to create a mold and now they're selling it way, way cheaper and completely undercutting her. And so instead of buying from her, tons of people in the vintage community are going and buying this cheaper version off of Amazon without understanding that poor old Lauren has put all of this time and money into something that's just been taken away from her. People are just going, mm, I can get it cheaper somewhere else. And I often hear in the comments section, when I talk about these sorts of things that, oh, you know, small businesses are being greedy, they're overcharging, but they're not. And I will do a video about fast fashion because the prices that we see are not the real price or the real cost of something. You have to think about how many people are involved in the product chain, in the creation chain of something. So from the point that the piece is designed, the creative process, actually turning that piece into a physical concept and then making the final product, paying the people that make the product, paying the people that ship the product, paying the people that sell the product. All of these things need to be paid for when you sell the item. The reason the big companies like the conglomerates that own things like Retro Stage, and it's not one company, one big conglomerate owns all these small little companies that are selling super cheap stuff on Amazon and on eBay. They can afford it because they're doing things en masse and they also didn't make the original. So they are stealing an idea, a concept that's already been done. All the hard work is done. They just copy it and sell it super, super cheap because they can, because they're not having to put the time and the energy in. How is that fair? If we buy less of the cheap, nasty, horrible things that break anyway, and we save up and spend money on fewer things, but buy really good quality things and buy from the people who actually created those items, we're gonna get a better deal for us and we'll be making a far more ethical choice. Chatting with Lauren about her situation, she raised some other things that I thought were very, very interesting. And that is what happens to our own countries and things like the postal system in our countries when these Chinese companies offer things at such a cheap cost or they say like, we're gonna do free shipping or super, super low shipping. What happens is our countries, our government, our postal system are getting further and further and further into debt causing an impossible situation where services and businesses can't keep up with the demand. They're having to shut down the business or they're having to take jobs away from people in our countries because they can't afford to eat the costs because they're not being paid for by the consumer anymore. I think a great example of that is recently Etsy decided they wanted to cancel shipping costs and offer free shipping to be competitors for eBay. And what's then happened is, of course, the seller is like, well, we can't absorb the cost. Like we're individuals. We can't drop the price of our product and absorb the shipping into our own personal savings. Uh, they would go out of business if they do that. But if they up the price of the product, people that used to shop with them and have been longstanding customers might understand the situation that, you know, Etsy has changed the rules about shipping and so the shipping is now part of the cost of the product. But people who are new are gonna see the product at a higher price and just go, this is really expensive, I'm gonna shop elsewhere. So then these small businesses are losing money over something they had zero control over, which is completely unfair, especially when a platform like Etsy is supposed to be designed for small business. Etsy is the place to find new favorites, the things that last beyond the latest trends, sold by real people and made for all of life's moments. So how do we combat this? Why has this come about? It's come about because the fast fashion industry is continually encouraging consumers to buy new things that they don't really need. The problem is that while we're consuming and consuming and consuming all the time, someone has to pay the cost. Whether it's the postal service, whether it's the people whose designs have been stolen, whether it's the poor people making the clothing in countries like India and China who aren't being paid a fair wage, who are in dangerous working conditions. Bangladesh is the world's second largest clothing manufacturer behind China, employing millions of people in thousands of factories. The industry has had a long history of lax enforcement of building safety standards and few worker protections. Actions. I'll put some videos down below that explain this a bit more in depth and it's something that if you guys are interested in I will make a video about fast fashion and kind of all of the underhanded activities that go into making the products that we buy all the time but the simplest way to not contribute to this kind of unethical processing is to not keep buying things all the time save up then buy what you want from a small business that deserves your money and that has made something that is gonna stand the test of time and is a good quality product. You have amazing creators right here. You can find them on Instagram, you can find them on Etsy, you can find them on Facebook. They're making the products that you need and maybe it's time for us to look at our own buying habits and think, how can I reduce the amount 
that I am buying and make more ethical decisions and make my purchasing power go further because the way you spend your money does impact other people and I think it's something that more people need to start thinking about. I am really passionate about this topic and sometimes when I get started on a video like this I kind of ramble and go off on tangents but I will get better at making these kinds of videos. <laughs> I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic and supporting small business and things like the stealing of designs and ideas from small businesses. I hope you liked the video guys. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and click that little notification bell so you know when my videos come out. Follow me on my Instagram at Miss B Town and come and join the Vintage Tips and Tricks Facebook group. We would love to have you and I will see you next Thursday for next week's video. Bye.